What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on part 5 or chapter 5 in our series of the SSI Open Water Diver Program. And like I stated in all the other videos, please do not use this video as a way for you to get properly trained on how to go scuba diving. You need to seek out your local SSI Open Water Instructor to get that proper training. What we would like for you to do is simply use our video videos as a study guide to help you pass your final exam. So with that being said, let's jump into chapter 5 of the SSI Open Water Program. So starting out in chapter 5, we're going to really focus on the different types of water environments we have. And I'm not just talking about fresh water and salt water. I'm also talking about, say, oceans, seas, quarries, lakes, rivers, you know, springs, things like that. There's always going to be a body of water for you to dive in. And you shouldn't, as a diver, get caught up in, well, diving is really not fun outside of those warm tropical coral reef environments. Diving can be very fun in your freshwater local environments as well. And I think a lot of times, newer divers they neglect their local environments and they don't get the full experience of diving and that's kind of what chapter five is really going to be about is that full experience what are you going to see when you're underwater now the first underwater marine life that we're going to really talk about is coral and coral is a big part of the ocean meaning you're going to see it in most warm tropical destinations and it's our goal to actually protect that coral this is why it's so very important that we practice proper neutral buoyancy and proper trim while in the water and we're always vigilant of where our feet are now if you want to learn a little bit more about the coral check out the ssi coral identification course it's a great academic only course that will apply towards other advanced certifications and specialty certifications as well. Now the next part of chapter 5 we're going to look at is the fish identification part and how to determine what a fish actually is or what classification of fish it is. Now of course we do have freshwater and saltwater fish so sometimes there are fish that can live in what's called brackish water which is a mixture of freshwater and saltwater. If you want to learn a little bit more about how to identify these fish and be able to pick these fish out of say a group or a school of them, look at the SSI fish identification course. It too is one of those academic only courses that's just going to increase your knowledge as a scuba diver. Now the next section of chapter 5 is the potential hazardous marine life such as sharks, eels, barracudas, things like that and what we call predatory animals. Now the truth of the matter is these animals are just as scared of you as what you are of them and 99.99999% of the time they're not going to mess with you unless you start disturbing their habitat or maybe you're in their feeding grounds or something like that. So as long as we just kind of keep our eyes on them and observe them from a distance, the likelihood of them coming after you is very slim to none. But if you would like to learn more about sharks and other potential hazards, check out the Shark Ecology course from SSI. This is a great little academic course where it's going to teach you about all the different species of sharks and how to identify them when you're underwater so that when you are diving, you know what to be, look out for and how to stay safe. Now to finish up chapter 5, let's talk about some of the diving opportunities. If you're anything like me, you want to go out, you want to see sharks, you want to see as much marine life as possible. Now unfortunately, unless you live in an area where sharks frequent quite a bit, you're not really going to get to see that much. However, there are some indoor diving environments such as local aquariums and things like that that will allow divers to jump in and swim with the local marine life. And it's a great opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about that marine life at a very, very minimal cost. You don't have to pay thousands of dollars to go on a warm tropical destination when you can do it in your local environment too, especially a controlled environment such as an aquarium or something like that. So guys, there you go. That's chapter five. It's probably the shortest chapter in the entire open water program. And it just teaches you a little bit more about different ecologies and the environment in itself. And like I said, check out all the different ecologies here from SSI. These are great academic courses that you can do at home. You don't even need an instructor there. And you're going to potentially earn certifications that will apply towards your advanced certification and your master scuba diver certification as well. But guys, if you like chapter five, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share if you got any questions comment down below and I'll try to answer your questions the best I can. And just following up on that disclaimer, please do not use our videos as a way to get properly trained in scuba diving. Make sure you are seeking out your local SSI open water instructor for that. Just simply use our videos as a study guide for your final open water exam. But guys, I'm going to go ahead and sign off today. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you in the next video.